Tristan Vucevic makes his debut as the Washington Wizards win their second straight victory with a victory over the Toronto Raptors, 112-109. to So we're going to look at how did we win this game and how much impact can Tristan Vucevic have for depth at the center position for the Washington Wizards next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again with Locked On Wizards, and I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. And again, the Washington Wizards. Um, get a 112 to 109 victory over the Toronto Raptors, and this happens to be Tristan Vucevic's debut. So, we're gonna look at how did this uh, how did the Wizards win this game? Um, and what were kind of the bad moments, but definitely a good team victory overall. So, let's get into it, everybody. So, looking at the team numbers, um, good in my opinion, rebounding, 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 rebounding is the key. Uh, when they rebound well. Very often than not, they stay in the game, and they are in a position to win the game. Um, if you look at the Wizards tonight, they out-rebounded Toronto. Where are we at? 63-50. to 50, uh, And offensive rebounds, 16 compared to their 13. Now, with those 16 offensive rebounds, it led to, what, 18 second-chance points. Now, um, what is the one negative, I guess, about um, the, the team tonight? Well, I would say turnovers. 18 turnovers. We had 10 in the – I mean, with eight minutes left in the second quarter. So, Turnovers were an issue, but ball movement was fluid with 28 assists tonight. So team-wise, you know, looking at the team stats, and, I mean, you, this was a really good team victory. Like the previous victory against Sacramento Kings, this was a team victory. So let's get into the uh, personal numbers for the starting five. Jordan Poole has, wow. I mean, he has really looked decent lately, but tonight he was a man on the mission. 18 points, four rebounds. 12 assists. I'm going to say that again. 12 assists. Uh, shooting 6 for 14 from the field, 2 for 8 from 3, 4 for 4 from the charity strike, 3 steals. So let me say this. Um, from a shooting standpoint, very efficient. Uh, he was very aggressive. But the 12 assists are what really, really makes me proud of Jordan Poole because um, – and we're going to talk about a lot more in a little bit, but as far as his future at, at starting point guard, where his fit will be next year. And obviously we're going to talk a lot about that during the offseason and leading up to – Next season, but he's been looking good at starting point guard. 12 assists are definitely really good number for him because he's got everybody involved. I mean, because early on for most of the game, he struggled with a shot, but he did rebound in the second half. And again, 12 assists, he's getting people involved. Three steals are telling me that he's putting a lot more effort on the defensive end. Now, um, is he is he going to be that stopper, that the defensive stopper at point guard? It remains to be seen right now, but he is putting – a lot more effort on defense, man. He's a lot more active on the defensive end, and it shows. It shows with Sacramento with the win against the Kings, and it showed tonight. Uh, Corey Kispert, 18 points, so he's that sniper, man, that score. And uh, he continues to impress um, more and more this season, shooting uh, 7 for 12, 4 for 6 from 3, 18 points again. So definitely impressed with what Corey Kispert has been doing. Like I said, you know, when we talk about breaking out, we talk a lot about Denny breaking out, and obviously we're about to talk about Turbo in a minute. But Corey Kispert is definitely – found a consistent scoring this season. And obviously, defensively, he's not going to be stopping, but a lot more effort on the defensive end. Turbo, man, 22 points, 13 rebounds, five assists, eight for 19 from the field, but three for eight from three. Um, definitely what I love from Denny, man. He continues to be that consistent source of points, being that second or third scorer behind um, Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole. So I definitely love what I see from Denny this year, man. I mean, he has definitely broken out, man. So – we're ready for him to take that next level at this point. But love what I saw, 13 rebounds, getting, getting, in, getting in the paint, getting dirty, getting the boards, five assists, getting uh, you know other players involved. Now, I will say this, and he's not the only player, but free throws have got to get better. I mean, you know, three for six, but clutch time, man, in that fourth quarter, you know, and we're going to talk about Kuz in a minute, but, but both Denny and Kuz missed pivotal free throws, in my opinion. So they got to show up those free throws when they when they matter, man. Uh, Kyle Kuzma. 16 points now. Yeah, I'm a you know, I get it seven for 18 from the field, 
oh for three from three shot had, you know it was an underwhelming night shot wise but he found other ways to get involved kind of like jordan pool you know when the shot wasn't dropping you know if you look at jordan pool 12 assists if you look at kyle kuzma nine boards five assists so he definitely got more involved so i mean he tried to get other people in you know involved in the in um in the offense my bad so uh and then we're gonna get into rashawn holmes and i i will admit you know when he first was acquired in the trade coming over here man um you know, I looked at him as being kind of limited offensively and really questioned what could he provide, especially with Marvin Bagley III at the time playing good basketball. And he's actually back tonight, but we're going to talk about it in a minute. But, I mean, Rashawn Holmes, 15 points, 14 rebounds, 6 for 9 from the field, 2 blocks. He has been impressive, very, very impressive. And when you add him to the, you know, the tandem of him and Marvin Bagley III, we're not hurting too much, especially with Tristan Vucevic finally coming over here. Now you're kind of intrigued looking at this center position because, again, Rashawn Holmes has been, has been providing quality minutes at the center position. I mean, defensively, rebounding numbers are, are have been really, really good. And then if you look at the points, yeah, he's not a guy who's going to hit jumpers, mid-ranges, you know, three-pointers, but very, very active in the paint. Uh, very, very active as far as scoring those pivotal back, uh, baskets in the paint, man. So, you know, definitely shout-out to Rashawn Holmes, man. He's been playing really good basketball. So um, let's take a look at – the second unit. Now, Jared Butler, again, 20 minutes play, seven uh, seven points, two rebounds, two assists, shooting three for seven, one for five from three, and one steal. Solid numbers off the bench. Johnny Davis, uh, in 17 minutes play, four points, including a really good layup, man. Um, One rebound, one assist, two for three from the field, one, 0 for one from three. So, But one steal, one block. Very, very, very active on the defensive end. And look, Johnny Davis, man, you know, his defense, he's definitely an above average defender man he is a you know he's definitely a dog in the defensive end now but just wait on him to you know shore himself up offensively but defensively very impressed with johnny davis uh marvin Bagley third uh, back from injury providing 16 minutes but 10 points eight boards four for seven for the field including one three-pointer shooting one for two from three quality minutes 16 minutes again 10 points eight rebounds of quality minutes from Marvin Bagley the third so i mean you know, I do like Rashawn Holmes in the tandem with Marvin Beckham III at center. And I'm definitely going to intri- – I'm a little intrigued by Tristan Vucevic, which we're about to talk about uh, making his debut. But uh, Patrick Baldwin Jr., underwhelming. I mean, 11 minutes, but two points, one, shooting one for three overall, over two from three. So underwhelming. His rebound numbers have been solid, except for the last game against the Kings. But I felt like, you know, he's got to find other ways to, get, to contribute. And he has with rebounds. But, again, a very underwhelming night. And uh, Justin Shinpenny, two minutes, one rebound, one assist, but no points. Uh, but Tristan Vucevic has made his arrival to the, the DMV. Uh, only three minutes, obviously, with Rashawn Holmes and uh, Marvin Bagley the third, and hit him on the death chart. But um, he's, he's got a little swiftness to him, man. Um, didn't get too much to look at, obviously, three minutes. But look, him just being here is a really big moment for this team because, again, we know go, we go from two centers to now we have a third, so we have a little bit of depth at the center position. So I can rest a little easy at the center position. Uh, so again, everybody, really good couple of good team victories. When this team wins a rebound battle, when they when the ball movement is fluid, when everybody gets involved, you know, when everybody does their job, this is not a bad team, you know. And like I said, obviously we're in a rebuild, you know, but you know when you look at certain pieces who could be here next year and beyond you know like i said kyle kuzma um you know if you find a good deal yeah but here's the thing i'm not too mad if you stay here next year because he's been that consistent 20 plus a game store and the leadership shows man like i said as long as everybody eats have no problem because like i said i've been a kyle kuzma fan since he's been here in dc man especially with him being that complete player man so um look we're not a bad team when we play as a team and that's the biggest underlying fact right there is that when we play as a team, we often win as a team. And like I said, I get it. 13 and 58, <laughs> we've lost a lot more than we won. But you see the potential with the squad, man. You know, you definitely see the potential with this team. Like I said, as far as young players, we have that foundation. So, again, in, in, um, before we get into comments, very, very good team victory, everybody. And like I said, 112-109, the Washington Wizards get a second straight victory at home against the Toronto Raptors. So, we're going to get into – uh comments before we roll but before we do tonight's episode is brought to you by prize picks so what is prize picks easy prize picks is america's number one fantasy sports app with over three million members they are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports just you against the numbers that's it you pick more than 
or less than on two to six players and their stat projections to watch the winnings roll in. Right now, it's demon time on prize picks. You can win up to 100 times your money ooh, with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. That's it. And you even get money back with three out of five. So they definitely, definitely try to work with you to get some money back. So what do you have to do? Easy. Go to prospects.com slash locked on NBA and use promo code locked on NBA for a first deposit matchup to $100. And again, all you have to do is go to prospects.com slash locked on NBA and use promo code locked on NBA for a first deposit matchup to $100. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the vine with all that shouting and we know who to talk about. Uh, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every single day. So let's get into comments. Um, We got a lot of them. Like I said, I definitely appreciate you guys. Man, it's Saturday, so Definitely, definitely appreciate, it, man. You guys rock with me on Saturday night, man. So let's get into it, y'all. Um, this is Vax. It says Johnny D's defense is carrying his career right now. I, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, his defense has been very, very fluid, man. I mean, his defense is he's been he's you know he's always been kind of a really good defender, but you see the effort you see the dog on the defensive end now is developing that offensive game. You know, you know, and looking at the shot, man. Um, because he had a couple of open looks, man. That one from three. You know, man, he's got to work on a shot. You know, we got to figure out how to get this guy going offensively. And like I said, I have no problem with him getting, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the second half of the season, man, because we have to see what we have in Johnny. But his defense, man, is his calling card. Uh, and so we definitely have to build upon that, in my opinion. Uh, playing on Opsis says, Jordan Poole facilitating that last play by passing the court. Kispert for the corner three was a great decision. He has been very decisive with the ball lay, which has been beneficial. I completely agree with you 100%. You know, his vision has been really – shining now i mean and i and i was going to bring up uh two key plays from that fourth quarter one with sean holmes in that block um that block was pivotable uh pivotable lord i'm, I'm creating words y'all uh, it was very pivotal um and then jordan Poole, you know with the hit action and, and catching Corey kisper in the corner for that three was man good vision from jordan Poole. like i said you know when we had a full roster when Taj jones was running point um, I thought at the time, you know, and it was at the time the best decision to make him the sixth man. It gave him opportunity to dictate the pace on the second unit, and he shined. But as starting point guard, man, like I said tonight, 12 assists. Um, my vision going forward is, look, call like it is. Right now he has very little value, obviously, with the issues suffering in the first half of the season. But he, you see the potential with Jordan Poole. You see the potential. And, you know, especially as a scorer. Um, but when you – Add a facilitator and him with that vision. I'm very intrigued to see what he could do in starting point guard. So, because obviously going into next year, I still think we need to go get a point guard of the future in the draft. But Jordan Poole, man, um, you know, we definitely have to consider, you know, especially if he continues to shine the way he is as far as vision, getting other people involved, you know, um, not making those crazy turnovers, man. You know, with him being locked in. Look, I'm very intrigued to see what he can do as starting point guard next year, man. But we'll see. You know, um, go to pump breaks a little bit, but I'm holding out hope that he can shine in DC. But I completely agree with you, man. He's been playing out of his mind. Edian said all the starters with a double, all young players, including Vucevic getting minutes and Shamit and Ty is not playing. This team is healing. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, I don't right now you may see them come back, but the, you very well could see Shaman and Ty is both sitting the rest of the year because, like I said, you know, this team has to see what they have in Jordan Poole going forward, man. And, him, you know, I, I have no problem with him being the starting point guard for re for the rest of the season. I have no problem with that. And definitely giving the young guys minutes. So I definitely agree with that, man. Uh, playing officers also ask, thoughts on retaining Rashawn Holmes next year for a veteran presence in leadership? Uh, you know, Marvin Bagley III, he, I mean, he's got one more year on his contract. But here's my thing. I do like what I see from Rashawn Holmes now. Like, I, I'll be the first person to admit that. I didn't know what to expect from him offensively and even as far as his presence in the paint because he didn't get a lot of minutes with Dallas. Um, but you see the potential with him. I mean, you know, I know he's 30, but look, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you can still develop certain areas of your game. And, you know, he's definitely, definitely impressed me lately. 
I mean, his rebound numbers are like are dope, man. Because and in his scoring, you know, like I said, he's not a guy who has a lot of tools in his offensive tool bag, but his paint scoring has been pivotal, man. And he's done a great job in DC. And it all, it all comes comes down to fit. You know, I'm a big Daniel Gafford fan, man, but you see a totally different player in Dallas as opposed to here. It's all about where you fit. Same thing with Marvin Bagley III and Rashawn Holmes. They fit here. You know, they found the right system, the right role, and they're shining. So uh, going forward, to be honest with you, I mean, Vucevic, obviously, he's part of the future. Uh, Marvin Bagley III, maybe you flip him because obviously he has a little value. But, you know, I, I believe that Marvin Bagley III has played good basketball here in D.C. So um, I understand the veteran presence, uh, but I still think that at the, at, if we get that first pick or even the top five pick, and Alex Sar is available. I, I think you still make that move. Now, Alex Sar can also play the four, so you can mix and match. There's a lot of variables in that, but uh, we'll see. You know, I definitely see your point, and I, de- I definitely actually agree with you. But, um, you know, we have a lot of options going forward, but the center position is definitely something that is going to be evaluated in the offseason, man. But um, depth is definitely a good thing till it's a bad thing, right? Uh, Desan says, what's up, Desan? Uh, four points by JD tonight. He didn't play good, but that's an improvement step by step. Yeah, we'll find small victories where we can. His defense has been the one part of his game that's definitely impressed me. Um, just adding the offensive presence. And like I said, you know, once he's in the paint, he's not bad. You know, you see the footwork. He's not a guy that's going to blow past anybody, but you see the footwork and the finesse by him. But his shot, his three-point shot, has got it. He needs a little work, man. So definitely want to see him continue to work on his game. Um, let's see here. Noam Shalom Cohen says, I like how JP is playing lately. Denny had a great game, but he needs to get better. Um, starting with JP, absolutely. He's been playing really good basketball. And like I said, I'm very intrigued to see, you know, could he be that next starting point guard next year? Um, you know, what is his fit? And obviously, a lot of moving pieces going on. So that's this question that is probably going to be better answered closer to the season once we roll through the offseason. But he's been playing really good basketball. You know, going, you know, making that move to the sixth man. And now with Ty's being out, him being that starting point guard. Um, if he can continue to get other people involved and boost those assist numbers, I'm very intrigued. And, you know, I know that's my saying, he's very intrigued, but I am, man. I, you know, I definitely want to see him succeed here in DC because he hasn't he hasn't in his prime yet, and he is a, he can play some ball. I mean, you know, hated him and love him. You know, looking at certain issues he had in the first half of the season, but I think we all can agree that Jordan Poole can definitely play basketball. I mean, he's definitely a scoring threat. So we can find fine-tune those other parts of his game, like getting other people involved, the vision, the defense. I think we're definitely cooking with a little bit of gas, man. So I definitely agree. Uh, Denny, I, again, I definitely agree with you now. You know, um, like I said, um, press conference in the, at the Kings game, I asked him, I said, what's next? And he said, look, he knows that he has to work more. You know, it's definitely bridging the defense and the offense into a cons- inconsistency. So he knows he has things to work on, man. But Look, fine-tuning this game offensively is definitely the name of the game for Denny. Uh, because de- defensively, he did take a small step back, but he's you know even with his small stomach small, small, jumbling, small step back defensively, he's still a really good defender. So is getting is really the biggest thing with Denny is consistency. You know because once he finds that the, the um that consistent game on both ends of the floor and become a true two-way player, now we're cooking, man. You know I definitely think that he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna continue to get better and better. Um, Kill Lopez says, "Do yeah, we we do now have chemistry with the starting five. Our team will be scary next year. I agree. You know, Jordan Poole point man. You know, it has you know an attack mode. You know, the fact that in transition now, I will say this about Jordan Poole, man. he's got to chill with the transition threes. That that I, that just gets me so upset. I mean, he's got to utilize the shot clock, man. But you know, him running point man, it has been looking good." He, and so, the, you know, I agree with you. That starting five is money. Rashawn Holmes has stepped up. You know, Kyle Kuzma has continued to be that guy as, as our number one option in scoring and leadership. And, and, and definitely, you know, again, with Kyle Kuzma, getting other people involved. So him and Jordan Poole have stepped up. And, you know, like I said, I've been, you know, I've been tough on both of them, man. But reason for that, I'm big fans of both of them. want to see them succeed in D.C. and wherever they go if they indeed aren't here. But um, they both stepped up. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, and let's call it like it is. You know, young guys have definitely played good. Corey Kispert and Denny Avia have stepped up and played well. But we don't win these last two games without Rashawn Holmes, Kyle Kuzma, and Jordan Poole, in my opinion. You just you don't. So they, they've definitely stepped up and looking really, really good. Um, Area underscored or Area 11 underscore T says, uh, so who are we looking for at the third pick? I can totally see them trying to build around Kuz and Poole after they win some games down the stretch. I mean, you know, and I kind of touched base in this last video. Um, 
I don't think the Kuz has hit star yet, and I but I think he can. Now I'll say this, you know, I, the reasons why. I mean, look, I mean, here's what it is. You know, Kyle Kuzma signed that contract. They he knew, and the organization knew that eventually they're going to flip him. But he's been a great leader here in DC. He's been great being that consistent. 20 points a game score for us. And now that he's getting other people involved, you don't have no problem. Now, you know, looking to the future, eventually you're going to want to see the long-term option at the four, whether it's an Alex Sar, whether it's another player. But, you know, I have no, you know, Poole, if he steps up to me and he's that guy at point guard, you know, him and uh, Kuz and Poole, they play well together. They really do. They play well together. Uh, so, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm not – I'm going to be honest with you. Now, the, the, the term build around Kuz – I just don't think who's is that guy that you build around. I mean, he's definitely a guy who is good for a rebuild. But as far as him being a long-term piece, as far as building it into a winner, I don't see that, honestly. I think eventually you do move on from Kuz. But he's been great for the team during the rebuild, in my opinion, especially now that he's finding ways to get other people involved. We know he can score. We know that he can use his frame to attack the basket, get to the free throw line. You know, his leadership has been money. You know what I mean? So. You know, big fan of Kuz, man. But like I said, eventually we are going to move on. And I don't see, you know, I don't see him as that guy, as the guy to build around. I didn't think Bradley Bill was the guy you built around because to me, Bradley Bill last year wasn't the number one option. And of course, y'all heard me time and time again about that subject. But um, Kuz is definitely a piece, but he's not the piece, if that makes sense. Um, and they um, they also said, and put some respect on Johnny's defensive hustle. Absolutely. He's a dog. Um, def defensively and as far as hustling and effort, he is a dog. So uh, we're going to get into some more comments. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on and bet on college troops until they cut down the nets. So uh, let's get back into it, everybody. Um, Shug Biz, what's good, man? Got two words with, with Sean Holmes. Totally agree. He has stepped up. He's been playing good basketball, scoring in the paint, defense, rebounding in the high pitch, man. He has been doing a really good job, and he's impressed me. Uh, Play Officer also says, notice how Coos and Pooh have been playing Less isolation basketball lately and started distributing the ball better. Absolutely. Because they're finding ways, both of them are finding ways to use your skills to you to get everybody involved. You know, with Kyle Kuzma, he's our number one option scorer. You know, he's our leader. You know, he's you know, so this thing is we know he can score. And he you know, at times he's become a little too dependent on that jump shot. But he knows now with that with that frame, he can drive at will. So when a, when the defense focuses on him, breaking down the defense. He can use Corey Kispert outside. He used Denny outside because Denny, with his quick release now, he's not hesitant to take that shot. So he's definitely finding other people. The same thing with Jordan Bull, where with his speed, with his ability to collapse defenses and attack the basket, he knows that he doesn't have to do it all. He can slide it out to the outside and utilize shooters. So, <laughs> excuse me. So when they work in tandem together and get everybody involved, this is not a bad team. They're not. I mean, you know, obviously re rebuilding, but, you know, we can start adding young pieces now. And so, you know, I, I completely agree on that front. Let's see. Shook Biz again says, I got three. I got some more words. Corey Kispert, dagger three. I mean, that is a play where you got to give credit where it's due to both parties. Jordan Poole in that pass, that vision was on point, man. And Corey Kispert, that's, when, I mean, that's a dagger, man, that, in my opinion, sealed the game. That was it. I mean, that was definitely clutch on uh, Corey Kispert's part, man. So I definitely agree on that. DC Onion was good. Kuzma still plays way too much ice ball. She's passed the ball. Kuz. At times, it is an issue at times, but I do believe he's been doing better on that front. You know, because that, like I said, that, that was my biggest and really my only complaint with Kyle Kuzma, which is I know you can be that scorer, Kuz. I know you can be that guy. With your frame, you, you, you're you your number one source of points for a reason. But, you know, you, you got to find ways to get everybody involved. And, you know, look. You know, Denny is breaking out. You know, Corey Kispert, in my opinion, is breaking out because he's uh, become a, a consistent source of points, which he always has. But now you just see a new element to Corey Kispert's game. That dog, man, you know, driving, cutting, three-point shots. So, you know, but I definitely agree that ISO ball has been a deterrent to this team. You know, when they play as a team, they win as a team. So I definitely, definitely agree on that. Brandon 72 asks, this this shows how bad Unsailed was. Even a score of assistant was a better, has a better winning percentage. 
Weston Seal Jr., I mean, I know he got promoted, but I mean, you, they, you, you know, look, Brian Keith has gotten a response from these guys. He has. I mean, you know, and you you just tell, you know, when um, when I cover the games, man, that there's a positivity to the guy. Like, he truly believes in these guys. You know, and, and like I said, should he be a candidate? I, I think that he should definitely get an interview for the head coaching position. Now, you still go out and you look at other options. You know, whether it's Sam Cassell, whether it's Juwan Howard, whether it's Mike Budenholzer, but I think he's earned the right to get a, an interview because they have responded to him, man. They have responded to him. Um, Alan Ohana asks, or says rather, uh, Denny is, has or is an all star potential. I think, I think he can develop into an all star. You know, when I look at the potential of Denny, it's kind of like Bilal. When they, when, when they, but here's the thing with both of them is that when they combined, when they com- become a two way player, that's the key to them. Because look, defensively, Denny since year one has been a good defender. You know, that's never been an issue. He's just now you're starting to see him breaking out and evolve offensively. Now, the biggest thing with Denny, and he'll admit to that, is getting stronger and finding consistency. If he can consistently be that 15 points and maybe a 20 points a game score, man, you definitely hit pay there with Denny. Same thing with Bilal. With his wingspan, with his defense, the defense is already there. It's already an elite level. It's just developing him offensively. So I think both of them, you know, best case scenario, can evolve into all-star players, in my opinion. But the biggest thing overall with this franchise is what? Development, development, development. We have got to develop more. we got to develop better. We've got to start hitting on picks more. That's how we succeed in this rebuild is hitting on picks. That is it. Um, DC Onion also says, Rich Homie was rebounding his ass burnt off. <laughs> like that. Um, yeah. You know, look, Rashawn Holmes, man, has definitely stepped up, man. Like I said, you don't get these last two victories without Rashawn Holmes in his work in the paint, man. You do not. Timothy Swindle says two wins in a row. Okay, Wizards. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a tease, man, because you know this team is 13 and 58, and we're definitely challenging for the number one pick. But it, I, I've said it all year, y'all. Culture. Culture matters, man. You know, culture, playing hard and playing to win. We get there's going to be a talent gap between most of the teams and the Wizards in the league. But you always play to win. You always play hard, and they're doing that. They're solidifying that culture, and that's what I want to see because that's pivotal early on in a rebuild uh should again be scott jd got single points where's your shot glass <laughs> yeah okay I, I got you i owe you <laughs> two shots I, I owe you tonight man so <laughs> uh keeping me on my toes man uh let's see hadian says i'm actually proud of pool he's maturing yes he is he is becoming a threat again man i'm saying right now jordan Poole, we knew uh, coming over from golden state that he was a monster scoring it's just the maturity um the issues but he's showing that up man look he, he had a um a moment tonight where he, he looked like he had hyper extended his knee or his leg he's tough you know what i mean you know i mean here's the thing with, with players who are truly locker room issues they're gonna find ways not to play you know when you're a dog you're gonna find ways to play you know what i mean and I, you know the maturity you know you see with jordan Poole. now it's just adding these pieces to his game you know adding more effort to the defensive end and become a better defender. You know, definitely getting other people involved because I think that, look, next year, because Ty is, you know, all arrows are pointing to him leaving. And even if we go out and get a point guard, whether it's Toe Pitch or Dylan Ham or an Isaiah Collier, you know, you still, you got to consider what Jordan Poole can do long-term at point guard, man, in my opinion, because he's been looking good. So we will see because a lot of has to happen before we have a, like a permanent opinion on that. Um, Els Johnson says, when does the player development portion of the rebuild start? I mean, we're going to see, but it's, in my opinion, it's already, it has to have already started because, look, we already have young talent. Now, Denny Avia has broken out, signed an extension. He's going to be here for a minute. Um, Corey Kispert, I think they need to go ahead and sign him to an extension a year, next year. Absolutely. Uh, you know, looking at Johnny Davis, I think it's not solely on the organization. I think both parties have to take some credit or criticism, right? Um, messing with his shot, messing with his role, or who he is as a player is on the organization. Not taking advantage of minutes, that's on Johnny. So, um, but you know, you, you got Jared Butler, who, in my opinion, look, he's not bad at point back up point guard. You know, Eugene M. Murray, he's a dog. I mean, you know, depending on what they do with Hamadou Diallo, but and RJ Hampton, but these guys are still young. So, I, I agree that development has to, you know, be key. Hitting through the draft has to be a priority, and you have to develop the young talent you already have, man. So, 
really good comment. I definitely appreciate it. Um, let's see. We're getting up to the 30 minute mark, so we're gonna try to knock out as many as I can. Try to knock out as much as I can, everybody. Like I said, I definitely appreciate the love, and you guys rock on me on a Saturday night. So I'm gonna try to do three more comments. Um, my man Rome Catalico said, Howdy, Brandon Scott. What's good? How you doing, man? Um, DC Onion says, B, we <laughs> laugh, laugh my butt off. We are a bad team. I mean, we looking, I mean, depends on how you, you know, which bad you're looking at. Like <laughs> these last two games, man, they look like a really good team. But then at this point, we're what 13 and 58. So I, you know, I, I get it. You're gonna take your, your bumps and bruises in the rebuild, man. But overall, I've been very impressed with what I saw from this team this year. I get it. The record speaks to a clear lack of or you know, a, a talent gap. I mean, and that's the thing. You know, we're right now we're not a good team, but we have a lot of potential. And if we can define roles, and I'm telling you right now, Jordan Poole is is one guy to look at, in my opinion. You know, it really is because he's been playing really good basketball. Um, so let's see. Groovy in the chamber says, salute to the channel. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all, man. Um, I can't read that, but appreciate the love. Uh, peace from Israel Wizards are the real magicians. Brandon, you're the best. What do you think about the coach so far? Um, I think that again, he has definitely earned an interview. Now, I do kind of want to see more, but here's the thing: it's tough to judge. And, and going back to West, you know, obviously West had his issues, you know, the lack of adjustments and, and things here and there, but it's tough to judge the coach right now because this is a team where it is still trying to find his identity. You know, we have a lot of young pieces. We're in a rebuild. We have veterans who can play, but we're trying to see what their roles are going forward long-term. But, you know, there's a lot of questions with this team, but, um, you know, there's talent here. There really is. There is talent here. Um, so I'm going to try to look at a couple more comments. Like I said, we are at the 31-minute mark, and I know it's Saturday night, so everybody wants to enjoy their Saturday night so let's see i'm gonna co do a couple more because there's so many good comments man uh let's see uh uh shook biz asks new over and under 17 wins i mean i can go ahead and answer that question real quick we're going to take a look at this uh the schedule real quick um and we're, we're going to go ahead and determine that right now so let's see 17 wins we are currently at 13 and 58 so let's take a look you said over and under 17. So we got Rash Chicago next on Monday. Uh, we're home against Brooklyn, home against the Pistons, home against the Heat, the Bucks, the Lakers, the Trailblazers, at Toronto, at Minnesota. No, yeah, go ahead and put an L in Minnesota. Um, the Bulls at home, and then we end the year April 14th at Boston. I mean, realistically, man, wins I'm looking at. Portland, I think, is a win. Detroit, I think, is a win. Um, I think Brooklyn is a winnable game. And I think the Chicago Bulls games. They had, you know, they can be winnable games, but Toronto is going to play us tough. Minnesota is an L. Boston's an L. Miami's an L. Milwaukee's an L. So let's see. Best case scenario, we win those four games. Ah, uh, man. That's, uh, ah, man. I'm going to go over, but, but, but not by much. You know, I think that when we play like we have these last couple games, we can get 18 wins. I think we can, but here's the thing, man. We got to team, play team basketball. When we get when we revert back to ISO ball, man, it just is bad juju for this team, man. So I'm going to hit one more question or comment and call it a night, everybody. Um, here we go. Uh, Red Wings 01. Pool is turning to the player we thought we were getting. Absolutely. You know, I was very, very excited when we acquired him from Golden State because he was electrifying. He could score. He's just got that it factor, man. And, you know, like I said, with him struggling as far as maturity and you know, shacked in the full moments. You know, he had to figure out who he was or who he is as a player in D.C. You know, I think the move coming from Golden State was a culture shock because you go from a team that, you know, was a, is a, was a dynasty and is a team that's challenging every year for playoffs to a team that is early on in the rebuild. He had to figure out who he was in D.C. and not hold on to the player he was in Golden State, if that makes sense. Because, look, I mean, I think he can get better here in D.C. I think that he could be that guy. I you know, I thought that coming in. You know, so if he locks in mentally – you know, if he continues to be that that a score, a number two option in it, or in, in number one, depending on the matchup and the night, you know, and, and definitely you utilize that vision, man. And, you know, put more effort on the defensive end. Look, he could be a future piece, but if they don't want him here long term, what is, you know, what's the other option? He's going to have value. So either way, I think it's a winnable situation with Jordan Poole, man. But 
you know, definitely, definitely would like what I see from him right now, man. So um, DC on your real quick said we should have kept KP. You need to stop. <laughs> I think look, I man, we, we gotta let that go, man. But I'm with you, man. I like KP too. But um, so again, everybody, Saturday night, definitely appreciate everybody rocking with me tonight. Really good victory for the Wizards, man. 112 to 109 at home over the Toronto Raptors. And so definitely, man, we're looking, you know, the young guys looking good, the vets are looking good. So look. Wizards are looking good right now, man, but it's not getting twisted. Let's look forward to a productive offseason of getting more young talent here in the nation's cap. But Cruz and Poole, man, they, they have, you know, they changed some perspectives as far as what their place is here long term. So, again, appreciate you guys, man. Uh, appreciate you guys rocking with me tonight. Uh, continue to keep uh, Ed in your prayers, man. He's under the weather, man. So um, with the weather up and down here in the East Coast and with something going on all the time, um, you know, it's been, definitely been a tough year for both of us, man, as far as sickness and our respective families, man. So definitely keep him in your prayers. So, again, appreciate you guys. And we will see you guys tomorrow at um, – right now I'm going to say 7, but I'm going to coordinate with Ed and see. Um, but right now it's going to be 7 o'clock for the live, re, um, the live mailbag episode tomorrow night. And we're also going to do a preview for Monday's game at – Chicago. So definitely rock with us tomorrow night. Like I said, I'm going to say seven, but we'll definitely let you guys know. So again, appreciate you guys, man. You guys enjoy your Saturday night and look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow. So hail to the Wizards and peace. See you guys tomorrow night.